You want to um, turn that heater on over there for him and shove that pizza in there? Anybody want any pizza? There's still pizza here. Uh-huh. One, two, three. Hey, I'm on with everybody. How are you guys doing? Um, waiting for the show for, from Daniel. And I'll get it posted up here. Well, okay there, Rob? Yep. I need that other, um, I want to grab one of those real quick. About right there, somewhere in that range. Not yet. There it is. Good up. How you guys doing? How's the mic tonight? That was a quick jump. Thank you for uh, giving us that extra hour uh, that we desperately needed uh, so that I can show you around a little bit more of uh, the car that's headed west. You guys have been asking for a while for the four-seater and um, tonight we're going to do a good view of where the four-seater's at. Shocks, tires, wheels, body, air filter, exhaust, trailer hitch. Engine exhaust. All up in there.
No more Bluetooth axles again. Cooler's bed, tailgate's off right now. Someone's saying something here. I have no idea what people are talking about, not carb compliance. We've had engines and cars at carb for many, many, many months. So don't know what you guys are talking about there. Obviously people don't know what they're talking about. Uh, Ron Davis has been a radiator supplier for us for a long time. Uh, the production radiators will not be Ron Davis, but they are exactly the same. Um, Bluetooth axle is a joke. There's the radiators, coolers. Yeah, um, we got a, quite a few people on tonight. Um, sway bar links still need to be done. They'll be done tomorrow before it heads west. Brake lines are on, power steering's on. Spindles, um, hubs, axles, tires, wheels, skid plate, hydraulic power steering, winch. Uh, we do have our our cooler up there, this is actually the heater core. Um, it's the power steering cooler, which runs about 180 degrees at the last test. And that should be significant for uh, um, what's a Bluetooth axle. Someone was joking because last week we didn't have axles in the car and they asked if they were Bluetooth. Um, obviously we have axles and those are in the car and that is the plunge that the axle has. Skid plate's not on right now. Dash is not in. Center council, skid plate's not in. Leaving the dash out for a few more days here. Got a couple things we want to do. The springs will not be blue. Fuel tank, production fuel tank is in. And we have had a production fuel tank for over a year now. That has been to soak, that has been to evap, and has been tested for many, many, many months. No King shocks, these are speed UTV shocks. Carbon body is exactly the same as production as far as the, um, the fitment. And we will have carbon body panels available as an accessory. They are not production, but uh, plastic is production. Uh, a plus bar, yes. Let's, um, let's move over here to the A plus bar. First car in the production UTV industry to ever have an A-plus bar and the second car to have V-bars as a production car. Mic is off. Hmm. Mic off, maybe turn your volume up. Can you guys hear me on my mic on Insta? One, two, three, got it. 
Huh? They say Instagram mics down. I don't know why it would be. All right, one, two, three, Instagram mic back up again. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. I guess it's when I walk around we start losing that. Firewall fitment sealed all the way to the top of the hood. Firewall's there, all sealed up. Approach angle, tires are in front of the hood. All right. Maybe my finger was on the mic. Sorry about that. Travel numbers. Uh, we believe safely 24 inches. This is a 77 inch uh, wide car. Rear shock mounts, no problem. Get you a view of the shock mounts. Um, all tube structure all the way up. Um, 4130 plate, and that is production. And it ties all the way down to the pivot point. It goes through the tubes. And unfortunately, up oh, can't see it because it's all black, but it does go up there. Big box structure. Rear sway bar is not on right now. It is double shear, mounts in here. Double shear, top and bottom. Uh, UHMW's um, skid plate um, comes with uh, 3 16 and we have up to 3 8 available as an accessory. One more view through the back. This will have a screen in front of the radiator and behind the fans there, but Obviously, exit the bed there. Uh, ride height is a little high right now. Um, nobody's in the car. It's probably four passengers about the right ride height. This car will come down about three inches um, with, with passengers in it. We'll be at 15 inches. Um, of ride height or static skid plate height. Um, no carbon panels do not come on the RG. It's a carbon graphic. Uh, these are actual carbon panels and we will have production carbon panels available um, as an accessory. Uh, all brake lines are braided. They are rubber coated so they don't chafe but they're actually still braided. Yeah, easily five foot two person over the dash. Can I get a five two? How tall are you? Five five? Five five. Ginger, come sit in it, please. Can you please uh, climb up in there and let's see, they want to see what you look like in the car. All right, there you are in the car. No problem. No problem. How about seeing over the dash? So there's Ginger sitting in at 5'5". Five five. Uh, race versions will have stickers for headlights. Production will have, obviously, production headlights that will look just like this, but um, with a lit up smile all the way across the bottom, eyebrows, all that. What seat is that? That is our carbon speed seats, and they are production uh, on the LE. So there's the carbon seats. So it does come with a carbon fiber seat, a uh, full support seat, and it is um, a production item. Thank you, Ginger. Um, very nice entry into the front seat here. Uh, you know, we've got a double roll bar built in here. So double chassis, I'll kind of come up from the bottom, let you see that. And that allows us to have side support, but also um, 
an easy entry to step in. And this is um, got a tube structure behind it. Um, Daniel's showing it here, but behind here, there's a one inch tube that works as a Nerf bar and rocker. Um, sliding seat mechanism. Show that up underneath there. LEs are all black, um, like a pleather material. All right. Uh, DOM chassis, 4130 suspension, 4130 shock mounts. Uh, as I said, 4130 suspension. Um, 6061 T6 front diff section, 7075 front tie rods all production. So you don't have to go and get accessories. Uh, forge spindle, production forge spindle, all cheer, monoball rod ends. Uh, no, there is an inner floor as well as an outer floor uh, for your feet. So there is two. Fuel tank, 13.8 gallons production fuel tank is in the car. I'll pop up under here and show you that. Production fuel tank right there, 13.8 gallons. And this was the first product that we actually made for the car because we knew that the fuel tank testing and then the engine uh, would be the most important things for car BPA, and then obviously gearboxes, clutches, everything else, but we've, we've been running for a long time. Come with a dual locking seat system, double pinned, very strong, very little flex. You got chain W skids on the front diff already. All right, there's your walk around. Fuel tank, same cars. Bandit, Diablo, question was fuel tank, same for all cars. Um, about nine miles per gallon is what we've seen so far testing. Yes, it has a rock crawling low gear. Control arms are beautiful. For a production control arm, like I said, I don't know what you're gonna need as an outside accessory on this car. I believe that we've addressed all concerns, all issues, and this is a, this is the way they're going to come production. These are not, um, these aren't $150,000 race cars. These are $28,000 two seaters, $30,000, huh? Base Diablo is 30, right? And the Bandit is 28, and the base. Sorry, let me get my prices right. Sorry, guys. $30,000 is the. Um, and the bandit, and 30, 32,000 for the four seater base. Still comes with the suspension, still comes with the beadlock wheel, comes with the 32 inch tall speed tires, comes with the forged spindles, comes with the 775 tie rods, comes with the diff, comes with the skid plates, um, comes with a base seat. So, fingers in the way again, sorry guys. All right. Oh yeah, Daniel, I forgot. We have a we have a more of these things, and now we've got them all over the place. Um, like I said, lots of production-based engines. But you look down inside. Production base. This is the way the castings come straight from the factory. No reason to. 
port and polish because she's pretty much there as a production unit. Um, walk around the engine. There's a structure all the way through this section here. Ties into the chassis. Chassis is mounted off of these, or the motor is mounted off of these, not bottom mounted. It's a hung engine uh, diff package. Um, alternator tucked up in there, starter. Hydraulic power steering. 105 amps. 105 amp alternator. Hydraulic power steering. I'm sure you guys heard we had a had an accident at the Parker 250. Ironically, um, it shut the electric power steering off on max, and we went for a ride. Um, here we've got hydraulic. Basically, same thing that's on a Ultra 4 trophy truck, Class 1. You know, I, we were talking about this thing earlier, but this engine reminds me a lot of a very uh, fine-tuned um, F1 engine. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's everything light, machined, just the material we need. Even the brackets are perfectly shaped. And the power steering bracket. Yeah, power, power steering bracket, the ribs in it. You know, it's all the stuff that you would, you would do as a machine part, but these are all obviously cast parts right from the factory. Uh, very clean bracketry, strong. Nice house bracket. Nice job there. Every small detail, hanger for the throttle body. Yeah, the shit talkers are gonna talk shit for a little bit longer, but their day's coming. As I said before, when, um, when we did the Polaris project, I took that personal at the end of that relationship, and I always said we would we would do our own UTV, and I think a lot of people laughed at me. Um, we did the Articat XX, but this has been our first full build um, engine, gearbox, diffs, shocks, tires, wheels, um, everything. I was hooked up with the best guys in the business and went for it. Speed logo and the All built-in speed logo into the casting. We call this the, the Speed R1, which is our Speed Robbie 1 engine. And uh, we put it on the scales. It weighed uh, exactly with alternator and hydraulic power steering and throttle body um, and some plumbing. Uh, it weighed in at right at 151 pounds. We've tried to address every, um, every potential issue. Um, and one thing I saw that obviously we've already noted is there's too many threads on here. You know, this is this is ideal. I want to see two threads at the end of every one. Um, we'll address this one. We'll address this one. Uh, there's no reason for an extra four threads anywhere. There's acceptable, non acceptable. All right. Our oil filter right here. Very, very, very nice motor. Um, very clean. It's a motor that we have designed with some of our friends. Use a lot of people from the NASCAR industry, IndyCar industry. Um, you know, Joey Arrington, Don Macedo, those guys, um, as well as Craig Campton over at Hypersports, just really picked a lot of people's brains and, and went for it. And, um, you know, we first started looking around and what we were going to do for an engine and Yamaha told me they weren't too interested in sending me an engine or selling me an engine. Uh, they thought I was a little bit too of a high risk. I think I'm going to be a much higher risk with our own power plant. In the marketplace, let me clarify that. All right. Low profile, exhaust out the back. I said I've showed you down and I'll do it in there one more time. Very clean. Tony Cola, thank you for your hard work, dedication to this project. Hours and hours and hours. And obviously, can't say enough about this young gentleman right here, Daniel Granger. Um, killed it. I mean, this has been, this has been a, a life project. This is not a job. This has been a way of life for this guy. And, um, you know, he got the full COVID-19 with me. Um, and we're talking about the extra 19 pounds. Um, but we have, we have lived this project 
uh, throughout all of the COVID. And um, it's pretty awesome to see it actually coming together and um, being able to take a look at it. I want to thank Casey Jeffries and, and Fabricators, um, Shrek, and um, help me, Justin, Kenny, Ginger, Kyle, Kyle over in the body department. Um, everybody has put a lot of effort in this thing. Very clean, very smooth, not a wild looking space machine, just clean. Clutches, got more clutch, clutch parts. We're, uh, we're through our clutch dilemma. Feel good about where we're at and we're moving forward, guys. How long is this car? This car is 120 inch wheelbase. What's that? How many people ordered cars? Uh, direct to consumer were over 2,700. Add that to the 78 dealers, well over 10,000 cars. What's that math? 14, 11, four? Something like that? Plenty, plenty to um, to absorb the, the tooling, production, engineering. Do the math, average cars about, by the time it leaves with accessories, about $40,000 by the time they leave the door. I think that's close to 500 million in sales. Pretty stoked about it. I wanna thank all of our loyal customers and everybody that is, um, trusted us to build them the best car in the industry. Thank you guys. And uh, we're not gonna let you down. Um, just laugh at the haters. It's all good. Uh, testing, uh, cars going to California. Um, we've got a double project going on. The car's all drawn, uh, wiring, stuff like that. But we've now we're doing the whole accessory loom attached to it. So every accessory that you could potentially want will be built into the car. And um, she's going to spend a little bit of time over there at James Lynn's. And the looms will be obviously replicated at the factory. All right, and get into tonight's show. There you go. Yeah, as, as Daniel said, um, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. I, uh, I saw they posted the RZR 10-year uh, um, anniversary of the four-seat Razor, and um, it's kind of funny when you look at where we were 10 years ago. And the reality is, is this beast right here. Whoops, breaking stuff. This monster here is, how old? 15 years old. So think about that. The Razor came out in 17 years old. Um, so the Unicorn is 17 years old. And um, people say, oh, look how far the Razor has come in the last 10 years. The reality is if the manufacturers would have let me build what I wanted to build, the UTVs wouldn't look like they look like for the last decade. Um, just basically oversized golf carts. And one thing I think is pretty cool is when you go and you think about building a UTV, and I was talking with Todd Romano earlier, and you, know, you look at Honda, Kawasaki, Polaris, Can-Am. They built jet skis and ATVs before building UTVs. We've raced Indy cars. NASCAR, basically invented the trophy truck class, built shocks, built tires. Uh, we moved down in the direction of UTVs and everybody else is coming to our level. It's about time that there's a true performance UTV in the industry.
Could have done this 10 years ago, pretty easy, guys. It's kind of sad. Yeah, started at El Medina High School. You guys probably remember when we had the Mickey Thompson series and we raced that Toyota Stadium truck at Anaheim Stadium. Pretty awesome. And um, cool. Getting fired up for tonight. Thank you. All right, hard to believe uh, presentation number 50. Um, been doing this for, for almost a year. It started off with um, people, what we were doing, and basically we have let you ride the whole project with us. Um, we've had a lot of naysayers out there saying we weren't ever gonna get it done, that it's not real. Uh, these are people that obviously don't understand my background, things we've done in the past, um, the trends we set in the past, and and the products that we built. Uh, but um, this thing here is, is very, very real. And this, uh, this coming winter or this fall, um, these things are gonna paint the desert floors and we're really excited about it. I wanna thank uh, Todd Romano for, for taking this challenge with me and um, kind of getting me back up on my feet after the whole Polaris debacle. Um, Right here, um, this is our 50th show. This is a uh, 10 year anniversary of the Polaris Razor. And what I wanna show guys is, this is what we presented as a Polaris Razor in 2000. I wanna say this was probably 2007. And um, three years later, this came out. And honestly, it seemed like in three years, we went backwards 10 years. Great car, a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was a, it was a wonderful project to, for us to be involved with. You know, it all started with, uh, with a guy by the name of John Menard, who you guys probably know, he was my supporter in Indy cars and NASCAR. Um, we've done numerous business deals with him. And that was about the time that the Rhino came out. And John asked me if, um, if I thought that I could build He's seen my trophy trucks and seen the Dakar Hummers and other vehicles that we were racing. He said, can you build one at something like this? And uh, obviously we popped up with this monster Polaris RZR um, at the dealer show. Uh, and that was the Polaris dealer show at the time. And I clearly remember Craig Scanlon and some of the guys looking at me and saying, what is that? And why would you do that? Well, I built this car about the time Max was born. And obviously, if you have a family and you want to go out and play an off-road, a two-seater wasn't going to work. And I built the four-seater, and they all kind of laughed at me. I believe that the four-seater is probably 60 to 70% of their total sales in the, um, the Razor category. So um, as it says, first four-seater. 2011 800 cc Robbie Gordon edition. Wow, 10 year anniversary. And as we were talking about it earlier, I'm not trying to be arrogant or, or cocky, but we could have built a trophy truck. Well, we made them 20 years ago and we could have built a car like this 10 years ago, pretty easy. Um, unfortunately, I was distracted with, with my program and Polaris wanted to build something like this. So, when we went to our next program, which was Articat, um, had very high hopes at Articat. Um, wasted another five years of my life designing the XX and unfortunately got deprived of a four-seater, a turbo, a 77-inch car. And I was told there wasn't a business case for a 
for a car like we're building here next to us. And they gave me my, my papers to walk in, um, I want to say it was January of, of 19. Uh, yeah, right after Dakar, right after we finished the Dakar with uh, three uh, XX turbo cars. And um, said that there wasn't a business case and that um, they don't see a market in this. Obviously, they don't know the West Coast. They don't ride. They're not involved uh, with the people like we are. And at that point, we came up with a concept. And I believe it might be the next drawing. No? Okay. Uh, it was different. We went from concept, hey, we're going to build a speed UTV. We built a kind of a um, concept vehicle that we announced at Sand Sports in 2019. And um, from there, said, all right, well, I guess people do like our concept and that they, uh, they are interested. And Todd and myself, we, we launched the company there at Sand Sports, took orders, walked out of Sand Sports with 170 something orders. And by Christmas, we had over 300 orders of a speed UTV, which was basically a concept vehicle. Um, at that time, we were talking with Yamaha, Suzuki, um, Ford, a few other guys about an engine package. And by about March of 2020, we knew that we had to produce our own engine if we were going to be a leader in the category. And it's pretty cool to see March 2020. <laughs> And it wasn't long, I want to say by March, April, May, by June of 20, we had running speed engines. And obviously now, a year later, we've got lots of running speed engines. So as I said, went from artist rendering concepts um, to full production car. And I know you're seeing the carbon body here, but the production car comes with a, with a plastic body, with plastic interior door panels, plastic center council. Very similar to the competition, just a lot nicer fit and finish. Obviously, uh, structurally sound chassis, suspension, um, the best shocks in the industry by far. Um, and now the leader in horsepower with a three-speed sequential gearbox, Torque limiters, beadlock wheels, picture there with it open. I know I showed it to you a little while ago, but lots of room to get in. Cool thing about the front doors, the way they open, they actually point the speakers up in the air. So if you're hanging out at Oldsmobile Hill and you've got one of our kicker speed stereo systems, you'll be able to definitely hear it. Like I said, these, uh, these are the A sides of all the body. Um, People will be starting to see uh, production plastic uh, very soon on our cars as well. And um, engine, 999cc, turbo, flex fuel, 105 amp alternator, hydraulic power steering. Uh, fit and finish details on this package is very IndyCar, high-end NASCAR F1 style. Um, a lot of details. A lot of cool integrated parts. We use a lot of parts um, multiple times. So we'll, we'll make double brackets and pick up two or three pieces and eliminate weight. So um, on the scale is 151 pounds with the throttle body, with the intake manifold, with the motor mounts, with the sensors, with the spark plugs, with the fuel rail, with the power steering pump, with the alternator. Um, and it's a, it's a proper engine, very well designed, very well thought out. And like I said, this isn't all my design. We were supported by some of the best in the industry uh, with um, some great help from um, past engine builders, um, past um, you know, engine guys that built production engines for, for high performance vehicles. Um, and this one here is pretty awesome. Uh, this guy here is a, a bleed in the head, um, something that we learned um, throughout the process. 
and um, something that was was done. We had to do that to LS engines to make them reliable on the off-road cars. And we bleed this water all the time to back to the top of the radiator to keep it from boiling the water uh, right between the two cylinders. Dual injectors per intake allows us as we go on to high boost and get under load, we can shoot more fuel in it. <coughs> uh, let's talk about fit and finish. This will not be production with an extra two inches of hose clamp there. Um, I talked to you about the small details. These small details will be addressed as well. Motor parts, you know, we've shown you motor parts before. Pretty excited about where we're at. Forged internals, forged rods, forged pistons, forged crank. Um, very, very, very well thought out package. Good journal support, good oiling. Side covers. More engine stuff, more engine stuff. Exhaust, integrated exhaust. Right there. This is uh, prior to machine. What's that? Transaxle internals, is that the back slide? Sorry, I popped right past it. Um, three speed gearbox. There's all transaxle internals. Um, I don't know if you can see that there, but dogged, so you can shift on the fly. Forge parts. Three speed sequ um, sequential gearbox. Uh, one piece integrated exhaust manifold and turbine housing. Uh, by doing this, we were able to save eight pounds just in the exhaust alone. Also eliminated another opportunity for leaks. I'm oh, sorry, they said six pounds. They're calling me out over two. So six pounds um, less by not having flanges, bolts, and extra gaskets. Um, and um, this is another part of the, the um, performance side of it. Uh, we didn't leave many... Um, many options available for the aftermarket accessories because we needed to be the leader in the category with a production-based engine. Lots and lots and lots of pieces here, pictures. You can go online and check these out later if you want. And um, that's it. So I'll do one more rock walk around the car. Um, we're gonna take a couple phone calls right now and um, integrated the, um, the wastegate into the exhaust flow. No need for a complex housing shape to try and capture the wastegate air as well. Uh, we integrated it right in from the get-go. Any phone calls coming in here? 704-949-1255. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon. How you doing? Doing good. Any questions tonight I can help you with? Yeah, I was wondering about, you haven't talked about the service manual or anything yet. Is this Robbie or is this somebody there? No, this is Robbie. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Good. Service manuals will definitely be out. We will not only do service manuals, we'll do service videos. Um, that oh, way... Okay. Like you do with, the, with your accessories on your speed stuff. Exactly how we do our accessories on the speed stuff, like we do the axles. We'll do service manuals on the whole car. I'll bring some of my engineers in to help me do that. But everything that is a service item, uh, we will um, we'll show you how to do it and also build a manual for you to show you what tools you need before you even start the job because there's nothing worse than starting a project and not having the, the tools you need to do the job. Um, you know, we'll be in um, the week that we plan on being there. My goal was to be there um, next weekend, 
And just where we're at with this, I believe I'm a couple days um, behind that goal. Uh, not a lot, but um, we want to spend some extra time over at James Lens, um, do some, uh, some really um, complex um, wiring that integrates all of our accessories right into the harness. So uh, the people that want to add accessories later uh, can go ahead and do that as well. When, they, when, they're, when you're ready we'll, we'll. well thank you thanks for being patient with us uh, obviously um, you know we do this 24/7 uh, this is um, this has been a priority stadium super truck will start back it looks like at St Pete here in a, in a few weeks but um, you know we're we're it's almost out of our hands on this car uh, it's it's all out to manufacturing like I said and it's um, you know we, we can't make all these parts in our house we use some of the best suppliers in the world and um, these are all through past relationships that we made and um, look forward to uh, to getting this thing out in the general public well these, these uh, live feeds that you've been giving us have been a big sell for me are you ever going to have that interim guy back in that was an interesting I could have watched him for hours yeah Tony is Tony's excellent and um, you know I, I wanted to give him credit as well as uh, Arrington and Lacido and and all the guys over there, as well as Craig Campton, you know, this is not Robbie building an engine in his garage. You know, this is this is associating with some of the best guys that I believe in the world on engine, ECUs, tuning, you know, um, suspension, transmissions. We you know we used uh, Albins, and and obviously we leaned on Ron Weddle over at Weddle a lot uh, when we were doing this, and. Um, you know, I believe that we do have the uh, the right guys involved, and they've got a lot of off road experience. Um, so yeah, we will we will bring more guys in. Um, you know, once we get to the next stage, where we'll start taking stuff apart and doing our videos and sharing those with you, we're going to continue to do these shows. Uh, this will be a a weekly thing. I know it's a bit of a moving target based on when we receive components. Uh, there was components for this car that were supposed to be here Wednesday that showed up today. And we wanted to show you guys a, basically a complete car um, so that you can, you can understand it and doors and how they open and how they work and all those types of things. Well, very good. Well, we're excited to see you down in Baja. And when this gets a little bit further down the line, we'll see you up here in Arizona to do some more racing. Sounds good. Thank you for calling in tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Robbie. Bye-bye. Nobody's grabbing the phones and putting them on the parks. I don't know if you know that. Hello, you're on with Robbie Gordon. How are you doing? Hey, Robbie. This is Brittany Seth's mom. Hey, how are you guys? Good. Good, good. How are you doing tonight? We're doing good. Seth's taking the night off because he had some people not big fan of him calling in, so I called in instead. Oh, man. That's that's not fair. We, we like Seth and I. I think we said that the other day. Um, I know Seth has some some very cool questions that he wants to ask, and we said we would we would push that for a few more days down the road. But I do appreciate you calling in tonight. Do you have a question? I do. I was interested in adding the seat cushion. Would it be too hard to decide if we really need them or not, or would it be better to? just order it from you guys with the car? Um, you can do it either way you want to do it. That's uh, that's an accessory that you can do at home as long as you have a sander and a bandsaw um, or a hot knife. It's something very easy to do. Cool. Yeah, we just added the seat heaters and a windshield this week, so that was something that I wanted since I didn't get my pink car. Why didn't you get the pink car? How'd you lose that fight? Three boys against me. I mean, I was the underdog. Come on, a real man wears pink. <laughs> He'll wear pink, but he won't drive pink. All right, cool. Well, thank you for calling in tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Hi, you're on with Robbie Gordon tonight. How you doing? Good. How are you, bud? I'm doing good. I'm tired. I've, obviously, you can see I need a haircut. I've uh, I've definitely gained some weight on this project, um, but you know we're um, 
we're throttled down here. You know, it's um, it's about all we can do to to uh, get this thing out the door. And um, and obviously, it's not just one car. It's everything we learn from one car gets integrated into the all all the cars to make manufacturing easier. Um, I have a few questions. Um, as far as the door, um, are there uh, bars in the doors? No, there is no bars in the doors. Um, so the doors will open up like they do. They're a double walled door with, um, with plastic structure inside the doors, but there is no bars inside the doors. Okay. And then another question. Um, I know like everyone on Facebook is talking this and that, um, about the center bar down the wall cage. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Is that bolted on through both sides? Is it bolted on through both sides? Hang on a second. Um, center bar, is it bolted on? Um, there is three sections of cage. Three sections, right? And... The center bar has tube clamps as well as the outside bars. And it is connected just, I'm looking under the car. It's connected uh, just like the, um, the A post, but in the front, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's six bolts that bolt the front of the cage down. And it has an interlocking um, roll cage clamp. The one that goes across? No, that one's one. That piece, uh, the one that goes left to right in the center goes all the way across. And the section in the back that has the A built into it, it's uh, very similar to the front, almost turned around the other direction with just a, a wider uh, V shape in the, in, the, in the back bars, which gives us diagonal support for uh, sideways rollovers, not only frontal. I believe we're the, um, we're the only UTV in the industry that has that as a production-based unit. I believe we're also the only one that has the third spine down the middle. Okay, and one last question. Does that car start up right now? No, it doesn't. What is, uh, what is holding it that back? What is holding that back? Um, as I said earlier, this car is leaving from us and going to James Lynn. Uh, James is our electrical engineer, and the wiring harness is all done. Um, but not on this car. And there, you know, when we do CAD and then you go real, sometimes there's small differences. And we want to make sure that this harness is exactly what it's supposed to be when we go to go test. Okay. Do we have computers? Yes. Do we have ECUs? Yes. Do we have harnesses and plugs? Yes. The coils, what color are those going to be? Coils, depends on which car. Orange on the RG cars, I believe silver on everything else. Okay. All right, sounds good. We ask great questions tonight. I do appreciate it. Do you have a car in order, if you don't mind me asking? Yes, I do. Cool. Did you go with a four-seater or two-seater? Four-seater. All right, awesome. Yeah, that's, um, I'll tell you, out of all of our sales, you know, everybody gave us a hard time for doing the El Diablo first, as far as a, a Dia Diablo. Diablo, Diablo was the first one we did. And the reason we did that is it's easy to go two-seater or four-seater from there. And for testing, it allowed us to do that. But obviously, the first cars that we manufacture are the four-seaters. So El Jefe comes first. All right, sounds good. All right, and we're going to run, uh, we've said this before, but we're going to run two 400-vehicle production runs of El Jefe. Then we're going to switch over and run a 500-vehicle run of El Diablos. And then we're going back to El Jefe's because we have so many El Jefe's built. So the Bandit guys out there, I'm sorry, but it all is based on um, demand. And El Jefe, the big boy four-seater, has been 80% of our sales. Yes, sir. That's going to be a monster. It, it, it's, a, it's a bitching car. I mean, honestly, you'll see my pre-runner. I put it up for sale not too long ago. My four-seat buggy is going to be for sale. When I have a car like this, I don't need cars like that. Sounds good, sir. All right, thank you. Thanks for calling in. All right, have a good night. You, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, you're on with Robbie Gordon, show number 50. How's it going? Hey, pretty good. Robbie, good to talk.
talk to you. Oh, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was the one with the five foot two comment that you answered earlier. Oh, cool. Excellent. I'm glad uh, that, that what a coincidence that you were able to get through. We do we do seem to struggle to get through. We've only got so many phone lines coming in. And when we do the show like tonight, you know, it just gets bottlenecked. Yeah, it was great to see Ginger sitting in the car, you know, spending this money on a car. If my wife couldn't see over the dash, I'd be in a world of trouble. <laughs> yeah, well, there's also, there's some things that we're going to do that um, people might not understand, but we're going to offer seat pads based for passenger and driver heights um, because our seats have... Um, what's the right word? They have uh, seat belt slots in the seat. And we have a designated height or angle off the seat belts. What is that? Is it anywhere from, from zero to 20? Is that shoulder harnesses? Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, but we want to go downhill. We want to pull the passenger down, but we don't want to pull more than 20 degrees. And if, they're, if they sit below the shoulder cutouts, Seat, then we've got to prop them up a little bit. So we're going to teach a lot of people about just the safety of motorsports as well um, that gets overlooked at a lot of other companies. So we, we've exposed a lot of stuff. And if you go on to um, go into to proper FIA seatbelt seating, uh, racing seat angles, it'll show you the way you're supposed to route your seat belts and the way you're supposed to do it. And um, when we built this car, I knew that a three-point over-the-shoulder strap, uh, that, that might be okay for a, for a road car, but it's not okay for, for multiple end-over-end, side-rollovers side side that, um, that people have in UTVs today. So we went all the way to a five-point harness, and we're going to give our customers right from the factory the best, uh, safest stuff that we can deliver to you guys. That's awesome. Yeah, I love everything you and the team have done as far as design work and safety. I have no questions because I love the fact you've taken no shortcuts. Yeah, you know, we get beat up on it because it takes time to make, to think of all the processes that work for everybody. Um, but, you know, it's um, we're not that far into this project. This is show number 50. And like I said, we had a couple concept vehicles at Sand Sports. This is engines, yeah. gearbox, shocks, spindles, hubs, tires. Um, seats, seat belts, chassis, pretty much everything on the car. Um, we have we have designed for our specs, and we have not compromised on anything. Love it. Thank. Yeah. Uh, like I said, love everything you've done. The only question that I can think of I have right now is the warranty you guys are going to be offering. Is there going to be any way to read the warranty contract ahead of time to help us decide whether or not we want to? Pick that up. Yeah, I, I see no reason for that. I'll ask uh, Todd to to start getting that in place that you guys can can take a look at it. So we've got a, a standard warranty of six months, an extended of one year, and we've also got an 18 month um, extended warranty as well. So I uh, have no problem uh, sharing that with you guys, and I'll get with um, with Todd, and we'll uh, we'll try to get that posted here in the next few weeks. Sweet. Great questions tonight. Waiting for my car. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Where are you out of? Looks like, is that five? Oregon? Yeah, I'm up here in Portland, Gresham area. Yep, yep. Had some wonderful races over there at GI Joe Grand Prix, and we were there a couple years ago in Portland with Stadium Super Truck. Love your area. Yeah. It, it, there's better areas than downtown Portland, but we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon tonight. How you doing? Good, Robbie. This is uh, from New Arizona. Hey, Henry. How you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, the uh, question I have is, since you're getting really close to production, are you going to have your uh, race legal bumpers and uh, GPS brackets and systems come uh, out for accessories? Yeah, we have already um, a GPS bracket that uh, bolts on to the A post. It wraps around. It tube clamps onto the A post. Now. The production cars, um, there's an option for a second dash, which does screen mirroring. So if you ran on lead nav, you'd be able to see that through your, through your second dash and your primary dash. Um, but if you wanted to run the Laurent system, 
We have a clamp that we've run at the Dakar cars and the Baja cars before. That would allow you to continue to have your second dash mounted to the glove box and also still use your glove box as a storage compartment. The, uh, the clamp, what size uh, uh, Lawrence will that fit? Um, we, we do a HDS 12. Um, I think Todd's run a HDS 11, or no, sorry, 7 on his A post. But normally I put that, I would, we're running an HDS 12 and the, um, a similar bracket, what we made for that car, be the, the bracket. And what's nice about that is you ever wanted to just go trail riding, it's something you can easily unbolt that bracket and have a lot more visibility. Okay. Is that on your accessories now or is that on the euro? Um, I will, I will get that. It's a bracket that we've made. Um, I'll post it later in the week when I'm in Arizona because I know I have a couple of them in the, in the shop there in Havasu. And I'll get that posted and we'll also show it to you on the car. We will add that accessory to the car and have that on for our test next week. Okay. Are we going to be able to buy the Lawrence system from you? Yeah, you'll be able to buy a Lawrence system for us as well. We are a dealer for Lawrence. So we can uh, help you out with a Lawrence system if that's what you choose. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm interested in that. And can't wait for the car. I'm All right. excited here. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being patient. And um, as you see, this thing gets more and more real every week. Um, and, you know, there's so much nonsense on the Internet. Um, you know, this is what we do. We're not going anywhere. Um, this, this, is, this is real. And um, I've got a great group of, of, of team members, staff, engineers, uh, accounting to just um, clerical, you know, all the way over to fabricators and machinists and technicians uh, all over the world that are that are helping us daily on this project. Yeah. Oh, a uh, quick question too, I don't know if you answered it, was the bumpers, the race legal bumpers. Well, race legal bumpers, we have not addressed that yet. Um, and the only reason we have not addressed that yet is racing has not been our number one priority with this car. Um, most of our customers, you know, we, we did an interview actually the, today with Score Journal and they were talking about, you know, this car and you know, race in this car, but this is a this is a cruiser car that we built for everybody to go out and have fun with. Um, has race car capabilities, but it's a it's a production car for fun um, that that has been inspired by trophy trokes, Indy cars, NASCAR, and all the vehicles that I've raced in my career, including the Dakar Rally, which has taught us to build very reliable vehicles. All right, like I said, I can't wait. I got the what is it? Thirteen oh nine. So. Fifteen oh nine. Thirteen oh nine. I Thir got the El Diablo. Thirteen oh nine. Yeah, you you would probably gonna be in the third run. I don't know. Oh, you have an El Diablo, so you will be in the third run. You got you got the two seater, and that's what that's what we'll be racing. That'll be our production um, um, race car, and I guarantee you're in that first five hundred run. Um, Thirteen hundred is if you go 800, 400, 400, 500, that's 1,900 cars, or no, 400, 1,300 cars. He's master 1,300. Diablo shall easily be in the first 500 Diablos. Yes, yes. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon tonight. You're the last caller tonight, and um, do you have a speed UTV? Yes, I do. I'm master number five. Southern Oregon. All right, cool. Have you accessorized your vehicle yet? Oh, um, I have. Okay. Did you get did box? you did you get the air uh, air cushions for the seats? Uh, I believe so. No, I got the heaters. I didn't get the air cushions. All right, cool. Well, tonight you just won um, four. Do you have a two seater or four seater? I have a four seater. Four seater. Okay. Uh, give me your master number real quick. Uh, five seventeen. Master five seventeen. Can I get your last name? Dempsey Lemus. Dempsey Lemus. 517. Ginger shaking her head. She's seen and, and knows the master number. Huh? Four. He has a four seater. And for calling in tonight and being the last caller of the night, you have received uh, four air cushions. Thank you, Mom. You're welcome. Thank you. Any, um, he didn't have him on his car. He got the heaters. And now we'll just add the air cushions to his order. All right. Um, any questions I can help you with? 
parties. I'm, I'm in Oregon, so I was just curious if there's going to be delivery parties in the state, or if you guys even figured that out yet. I know it's uh, weird because of the 19. We, but we have a lot of cars ordered from Oregon, so um, I believe that we will definitely have a dealer party up in, up in your state. There will be states that we won't. Don't take that the wrong way, but your state is, uh, you, there's a lot of cars ordered from the Oregon area, and we appreciate your guys' business. Plus, I know you guys got some good dunes up there as well. Perfect, man. All right. Is it the Oregon Dune Fest? I think I've seen that before. Is that right? Uh, huh? That Dune Fest in July. That's in Oregon, though, in July, right? Yeah, yeah. In July. What's that? Oh, Dune Fest is end of July, and then we have... Dune Fest, okay. Yeah, okay. I was trying to think of what that event was. I've seen it before, for sure. Have not been there, but would love to go there sometime. Yeah, I'd like to see you guys out there. Isn't that the place that... Um, uh, what was that guy's name that did that gnarly, um, like, world record long jump? Is that Was that at Dune Fest? Uh, I, think, I think that was at... It was either Huck Fest or UTV Takeover. I think that might have been in Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember where that was, but I was trying. I knew it was one of those events. Sorry, I just don't don't know them. Um, cool. Uh, any other questions? Um, no. You like the car? You like the direction we're headed? I love it. I appreciate it, man. I got two kids, so I want a family cruiser. I've had Polaris stuff, and it's just a, kind of a bottomless money pit on those. After with accessorizing them and making them safe, I like to see that you guys are coming out right out of the box. And Safety first, and I'm going to buy five points. The seats look solid. The cage looks solid. Everything looks solid, so I, I, I'm happy. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and uh, we'll be on again next week. Have a good one. Have a good one. That's going to be a wrap on tonight's show. I'll do one more walk around. I will go ahead and un the mic because it seems like I have a problem with it. Um, so we'll get rid of the one off the iPhone. Can you guys hear me okay? One, two, three. Walking around the engine, do a little face-to-face -face with Daniel here. Until the car is gone. So he's not until the car is gone. <laughs> Top speed, depends. Depends on your terrain, depends on where you're riding. It'll be governed to start with 86 miles an hour. Will we have windshield wipers? That answer is yes. Full hydraulic power steering. Uh, question is the plastic shields. It's something we're tying on this test. Um, want to make sure that we can manage the heat there. Uh, biggest thing is keeping all the rocks out of the engine and stuff. Um, we'll let you know about this. This is another um, test that item that obviously we have them on my 4C buggy. And it's something I wanted to run here. And obviously you can see that that protects everything up inside there. So that's our goal is um, try to protect the CV boots. Um, protect a lot of items and we'll let you know uh, next test here we'll be running these and um, obviously we got to get 
enough heat out of there for the exhaust. That's obviously a concern. Um, shielding will go on before we go. Right now there's no shielding there. It will be um, heat shielded. Exhaust has moved way down from the bed. Turbo is mounted at the back in a very, very safe location. Shrek, you did an awesome job on the exhaust. Very nice, buddy. No, the bed is plastic, but it'll have a, it'll have a rough finish like this. Nice job, guys. Um, can't say enough about the team that works here and builds these cars for us. There's a step right there. It's got a built-in running board. Kind of hard to see with the, with the all black, but it's built in there. Casey killed it on this build. Beautiful. So much, so much nicer. And... We knew we'd only get nicer from one build to the next, and production cars will even be nicer again. Very clean body lines, not a lot of jagged, sharp edges. Graphics are going to look awesome on these vehicles. Oil tank setup? Yeah, no problem. I'll show you oil tank. Oil tank is very, something very similar to what we used on the SST truck. The uh, reason we went for that was obviously um, we have a sight tube there. Your production tank will have a sight tube as well. Got a filter down at the bottom. That way if you happen to drop any oil in when you're doing it, power steering is up in there. Shocks, compression, and rebound adjustable. Yes, this car is sitting on 35s. So this car is sitting on 35s, sitting on a Motivator 35 on KMC wheels, beadlocks. That's another reason this thing's sitting up higher is 35 inch tall tires. Again, thank you guys. Have a great week. See you next week.